guys. It's Mark. Welcome back to the Markoon 13 YouTube channel. Tonight, we got another interesting one. We're doing a Flex Fuel E85 sensor install guide here. Now, it's going to be pretty straightforward. I was looking online, got a Flex Fuel sensor, wanted to install it myself. Unfortunately, didn't come across any videos, anything like that. I saw some instructions online, which I printed out, which we're going to try and follow here. But it's just a bunch of pictures. I didn't think it was very clear. We're gonna kind of figure this out together and uh, thought I'd make the first instructional install video here for the Flex Fuel sensors for our 2016 and 2017 Camaro SSs. So let's get started. So the first thing you're gonna need is obviously the Flex Fuel sensor. There's gonna be two little parts here. I got this one from EFI Tuning. Um, it was about 300 bucks. You can get the DSX kit, that one's 400 bucks and it comes with this little tool, but that one was $300 and I paid three bucks for this tool at O'Reilly, so I figured it was worth it. And for now, as far as I know, this is all that we're gonna need. It's basically just a fuel line disconnect to, to basically get the fuel lines here off a lot easier using this tool. And again, I got this for like three bucks. So we just need the 3 8 inch one, if there are any other tools that we need, I'll let you guys know as we go on. But that's all I think we need for now, so let's go ahead and get started. All right, so the first thing we're gonna wanna do is just remove these covers here that were here. And by the way, they just snap off. You don't need any tools or anything like that. You just kinda snap it off, pull it out from underneath the fuel line, and you're good to go. All right, so next we need to remove the crossover hose here. So we're going to go ahead and unclip this. Let's see, how do we do this? <clears throat> so just push these little tabs forward and pull the hose up. So push it forward, pull the hose up. All right, pretty simple. All right, so next we want to go ahead and remove these little clips right here first before we can remove the hose, so let's do that. All right, so the best way to do it, just get a screwdriver in there, kind of pry it down just like that. Here's where the little tool comes into play. We're basically just gonna get it around this, kind of pull it up and uh, go ahead and pull this fuel line off, so let's do that. So I got it off. So here's what you're gonna want to do. You want to take this thing, Basically pull it up until you hear an audible click and then go ahead and pull the fuel line off. Now make sure you have paper towel underneath here so because some of the fuel will spill. I recommend waiting a few hours for the car to be turned off here first and that way um, the pressure is going to die down a little bit, it will bleed out a little bit. So we're going to go ahead and do the same thing on the other side now. And again we're going to take our screwdriver, kind of just wiggle that in, it's very simple. And same thing right back here. So kind of push that up until it's all the way in, just like that. See how that's all the way in? Oh, don't forget the paper towels. That could have been bad again. And that should come right off, just like that. Oh, there was a lot more fuel here. <laughs> All right, so we got our factory uh, fuel bridge line thing out here. Next, we're gonna go ahead and install the EFI tuning fuel bridge sensor thing here. So here we go. Okay, so you wanna unscrew this little piece from the end, then go ahead, push it down all the way, and then you want to put it over the fuel line and screw it back in. It's not easy, it's a little tight in here and everything's got gas on it. So we're gonna do the same thing on the other side, unscrew the piece, put the fuel line in, make sure it's all the way down, put the little screw piece back on and then screw it back up. A rule of thumb to go by on those is hand tighten until it's tight with your fingers then take a wrench and do a quarter turn more to make sure that all the fuel lines are tight, nothing's leaking there. And the clips actually do not go back on this, um, so they're not gonna be used. We'll just keep them with the old fuel line system. So now we're gonna go ahead and start up the car, make sure there's no fuel leaks, and then we'll move to the next step. So hope everything goes okay here. Well, looks like she runs okay. 
No fuel leaks there, from what I can see. And we'll check the other side. No fuel leaks there, from what I can see there, so we're all good, I think. Everything looks good, so we're gonna go ahead and disconnect the battery next, and then we're gonna find a particular connector to go ahead and plug into, and I'll show you guys right where that is. So if you look on the left side of the engine, you've got the, what the hell is this thing? I can't even think right now. Um, the fuse box. You're gonna look underneath and you're gonna see three connectors. We want the one on the right that is slanted down. The other two are flat. You'll see that when you look in. So we're gonna grab that, push the red tab, and go ahead and unplug that after we disconnect the battery. Okay, so we got to the connector and we got the cover off, however, it's gonna be impossible to get the wire in there, so I'm gonna go ahead and take the fuse box out of the way just so it'll be easier to access. So there's just a few bolts and we'll kind of move it out of the way. Okay, so next we're gonna turn it over where the blue thing is, stick a tiny little screwdriver in here and just pop it up. You'll hear a pop. Do not try and pull this off. It does not come off, it just pops up. Do that on both sides, you'll hear a pop and you should see it lifted up just like this. Holy shit guys, getting this wire in was easily the hardest part of the install. So I am gonna save you guys a ton of time here. Okay, so when we're looking in on the wires, let me zoom in there. You're going to see, okay, where this black one goes in, there was a gray thing there. So you're gonna see one, two, three gray stubs on the right side row, so the second from the left, that's where the black wire is going to go in. Or you can count from the top, the top one on the right is 33, so you're gonna go 33, green is 34, purple 35, gray dot 36, gray dot 37, boom, 38 is where you want to put the wire in. Also, on the inside of the wire, this is gonna save you guys a ton of time as well. You're gonna see a little white bar on the inside of the connector where the wire goes in, almost like a USB stick. That white bar goes to the right when you're looking at it. So if we're looking at the car, at the wire box, just like this, the white bar goes this way with the rest of the cords and you just plug it right in until you can't push it in anymore. Final steps. We got the ECU plugged back in, push the red tab back in. We've got the ground wire that came with the EFI and I just put it right here underneath, I don't know if you can see that, underneath the fuse box bolt, seemed like a perfect spot going into the frame right here. And then we go ahead and run the cord along here and we plug the final piece into this connector right here, this little brown thing into the fuel line here and go ahead and plug the battery back in, start the car up, everything should be good to go. All right guys, quick edit from the next day here. Those two pin connectors that I didn't know what to do with, don't plug them into each other, so they actually go in on the passenger side, right where this little switch is here. So behind the throttle, throttle body on the left side, you're gonna see these two switches. The one on the left, pull this white thing back, like that, and then push down on it and it should pop right out. I use needle nose pliers to get it out so that way I don't have to take this whole cover off and it just, boom, came right off. And then plug the old one into the new connector from EFI. Then we go ahead and zip tie everything up. All right guys, here's the final finished product. Don't worry about the zip ties, those are just the only colors that I had right now to zip tie the wires up. Everything's back on, we got the fuel, the car started, we got this bolted back on, again the ground coming right up here, everything is nicely tucked away. Guys, I gotta be really honest, it feels great to actually have worked on your own car and done your own mods, that's honestly the first thing I've ever done by myself, the headers, obviously I had a mechanic really help me, um, so I feel kinda accomplished that the car actually started back up after I did everything great. As you can tell, I am extremely red in the face. I'm sweating. The fumes from starting the car in the garage with the catless headers and 
the mix of the gas that spilled on the engine, the smells, I've got a headache in here, my face is red. Um, but hey, it was all worth it at the end of the day. Not too bad of an install. Knowing what I know now, I could easily do it again and shave 20 minutes off. So hopefully that helps you guys do it if you want to install it. Definitely not too bad. If you watch the whole video through, you follow exactly what I told you to do. Just go ahead and install it yourself. It's actually not too bad. Any questions, let me know in the comments down below. Be more than happy to help you guys out if you want to install your own or you're looking to buy a flex fuel kit. Hope you guys enjoyed this one. Can't wait until the car gets tuned and we can actually run some E85 through this bitch. See you guys next time. All right, that was bad. Cut.